What is up my fellow gamers in today's video we got our best guide for lieutenants in dungeon hunter 6 like and sub for more amazing gaming content make sure if you didn't already check out yesterday's videos we did a best beginners guide yesterday and we also did over 300 summons for lieutenants it was epic we got a ton of ssr units all right so we got a lot to talk about so let's just jump into this first thing i want to go over is summoning and that is the mystery summoning for our wish list who to put in your wish list which lieutenant now when i first started yesterday and we did our summons i went back and recorded uh looked back at the recording and you don't initially have your wish list unlocked all right now i don't know when you unlock it but randomly as i was doing my summons it just kind of unlocked so just be on the mind that if you're a brand new player and you do not see a wish list for your mystery mysterious summoning um, I'm not sure how to trigger it. Just keep summoning and uh, just be careful though. Don't keep going 10, 10, 10. Just kind of keep going back and forth and checking. Eventually you will unlock this. Now you can go ahead and put one Lieutenant for each different type. We have water, fire, and nature. And it's also not just SSRs, but you can also put SRs, Rs. So pretty much any lieutenant, no matter what rarity is, you can put that. The main one, uh, first one I'm gonna suggest is gonna be the Demonic Wolf. And that's mainly because you already get a copy for pre-registering. So having this as your wish list is going to help you possibly get it to six stars really, really fast. Now the most important thing is that I do not recommend that you kind of constantly switch your wish list around. Unfortunately, the way this is going to work, if you want to be competitive, whether you're paying money or not, you really have to stick to a couple main lieutenants and that's it. You can't really balance them out or you'll never be able to get any of these to 10 stars. It is ridiculously difficult to get one lieutenant to 10 stars. And once you do that, that's how you go ahead and unlock their third special skill ability. And that's really your main focus is you wanna get one of these to 10 stars, so that way you get that third skill effect unlocked on them. So really, you just gotta pick one and kinda stick with it and just build it out because it is a, a pretty treacherous to go ahead and keep promoting it to the next star level. You need a lot of food, a lot of copies of it, a lot of copies of other lieutenants. Another next suggestion I have is going to be Death Knight. Death Knight is extremely strong. That is this one right here. He looks like this emblem. Really, really strong. He does insane buffs. He gives you damage reduction. He buffs your attack. He buffs your crit. He, he basically just buffs the hell out of you. I'll go to the complete album and I'll talk a little bit more about each different lieutenant, but this is just setting up our wish list. We have this one. I, I don't know what his name is. Well, I'll go through it when we're looking in the album, but this hero, the, this lieutenant right here is extremely good for PVP content. He has a lot of controlling effects. And then the other one that I suggest is gonna be this one right here. This is Delphia, I think is how you say her name. You unlock her, everyone unlocks her for free. I believe it's like a login bonus. She's a really strong Lieutenant. She goes ahead, she gives you a little bit of healing. She also does some damage as well. And then for our nature, we have a couple more suggestions, which is again, I forget his name, but a really strong control effect. I pulled like four of him yesterday in our summons video, which was insane. And then the other one is going to be this one right here. Again, another one that I, I don't remember the name, but we'll go over the albums uh, in a shortly, so that way I can talk more about each Lieutenant. Basically what I do is I say like level 60 is a good starting point. Get one to level 60 and then get your second one to level 60 and then your third one to level 60. You don't honestly have to balance them out too much. I was dumping all of my resources into the Archmage Herbert at the beginning yesterday when I first started playing. I had him at like level 60 and I had my other two lieutenants at level one and I was still blowing through the content. So even if you just have one really super duper strong lieutenant at the beginning as a new player, you'll be fine. You don't really have to worry about leveling up the other two until you get a little bit deeper into like second, third day. That's when you wanna kind of start to balance it out more. But we're gonna have three main setups. So if we go to our lineup, it even gives us three different ways that we can go ahead and set this up. We have three defaults. Your first default, and it's not in any particular order, but 
you should have one default lineup that is focused for the story mode, for the story missions. And that has to do with like, when you're doing your story quest lines and you have to destroy a bunch of different monsters, but then you also have like a boss battle at the end or anything that has to do with boss battles that doesn't involve any other players. So also your AFK tower, which is that tome tower as well. This is the same lineup that you would use. You're gonna have one healer slash buffer. You're gonna have one tanky character and then you can have one damage dealer. Now, if you are a ranged class like me, I'm an archer or if you're a mage or whatever else, you are going to wanna focus more on having two melee units, whether it's two melees who do damage or one tank and one melee damage. If you are a warrior class, you're gonna to wanna to have a healer and then your other two are gonna be damage dealers, specifically more like ranged damage dealers or melee damage dealers is fine, but don't go with another tank. If you're already a warrior, just go with two main damage dealers. That's kind of the basic setup for your story mode. And that's because all we're trying to do is survive. It's for survivability. It's what I would call a survivability build. There is no timers for this. So you don't have to destroy, you don't have to destroy those bosses in the campaign missions, the solo game modes in any specific time. You just have to survive. Your second build is going to be all damage dealers. So you can also have like a support who's gonna heal you and buff your attack. That's something you can also do. But the other two, regardless of your class, you wanna have the best damage dealing lieutenants you have. And what we're gonna do with that second build is we're gonna use that specifically for when we are farming experience points. If we are doing something like the magical chest right here, the magic chest, all you do is you attack monsters as much as you can and you just get experience points. For stuff like this, game modes where you just wanna destroy as many monsters as possible, we don't care about survivability. These enemies, they barely do any damage to you. So we don't need a tank, we don't need a front line, no matter what class you are. We just want as much damage dealing lieutenants as possible so that way we can get as much XP and level up as fast. And the other game mode that you're gonna wanna have that build for, the Evil Invasion uh, or something like the Relics as well. Anything that you are doing that has to do with attacking bosses and it involves other live players and it has a damage leaderboard. So when you have that damage leaderboard and you're kind of competing against other live players who can deal the most damage to the boss, you wanna have your entire lineup filled with damage dealing lieutenants. And or you could have one healer slash one buffer who buffs your attacks. That's also another viable option as well, like I mentioned. Third main build we're gonna have is gonna be strictly for PVP content. And all you're gonna be doing is kind of looking for lieutenants who it's it's kind of the same build as our survivability build uh we're gonna have one healer buffer we're gonna have one damage dealer but for our tank we're going to have a tank that has controlling effects really quick easy tip that i'm gonna suggest is try and focus on one main element um, and that is because it's gonna be ridiculously hard to try and get two of the same elements to like 10 stars or even seven or eight stars. And that is because you're gonna need constant copies of others from that same element. So what I mean by that is for this hero, for this Lieutenant right here, the Runes Guardian, we need two more nature types at five stars along with a random blanket six star lieutenant, doesn't matter who it is. But if I'm going ahead and then them trying to uh, promote another nature, you'll see that this one's gonna need five stars as well. That is another nature type. So you, there's kind of like a little bit of discrepancy there if you're constantly trying to level, if you're tr constantly trying to promote from the same elements. But like I said, what I suggest is have one nature, have one fire and have one water. So that way it's a lot easier and faster for you to go ahead and upgrade those three main ones or four main ones that you have. For our water lieutenants, aside from the demonic wolf, other one that I really suggest you also put as your wish list, but you don't get a free copy is uh, Coretta. She is a damage buffer and control. Really, really, absolutely sick skills. Other one that I also suggest out of water is going to be 
Death Knight, I mentioned him previously. He's a damage buffer and he also gives you invulnerability. Another amazing SSR water unit. So those are like my three main, I would say for blue, for waters that I suggest Coretta, the Demonic Wolf, and finally Death Knight. The Archmage Herbert. Now this is the pay to win Lieutenant. You have to spend money in order to really level him up a lot and it, it can be costly. Your first $2 pack will unlock him and then it's like $15 to star him up and then $30 and $50. And I mean, eventually to get him to 10 stars, I imagine it's gonna end up costing you $500, 600, I don't know, something like that. But it's gonna be quite expensive. Um, if you're paid to win, if you have a lot of money to spend, that this is gonna be your best bet to max him out to 10 stars. Probably one of the best supports, if not the best support in the game. If you don't wanna go that route, we have some other ones. Uh, uh, Delfina, Delfina, this is the one that everyone gets for free from logging in. She is a burst and a hot, which is heal over time. Uh, and the other fire one is Terror Fiend. He has execute and damage buff, swings the sword, does a bunch of damage, gains 40% crit chance for eight seconds, which is really, really strong. And then rounding it out for our nature, we have Nora who does execute and damage buff. So again, we're getting a bunch of damage. We're also getting a crit chance buff. Uh, the other one that I recommend is the Ruins Guardian. You're getting control and shielding. This guy is an absolute monster for PVP. Highly suggested for PVP. Uh, the other nature one that I really, really like is going to be this one right here, the Winged Terror. You're getting healing and damage buff. Another one that I say is like the top three support in the game. That is it. Hope you guys and girls enjoyed the video. Stay happy, stay safe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace out.